Now, you're probably wondering why I'm showing you shoes in a laptop review. Well, I'm just using my shoes here as an analogy. We have to buy our technology like we would buy anything else. If you have a certain use case, you don't want to buy something that doesn't fit your use case. Simple as that. I wouldn't wear a pair of dress shoes when I want to go to the beach. I wouldn't wear a pair of flip-flops when I want to go hiking. And I wouldn't, pair, wouldn't wear a pair of hiking shoes if I wanted to shovel snow. Although I could use these shoes in different use cases, you want to make sure that you choose your technology that's going to fit your use case. Just because a pair of flip-flops would not go well with a suit doesn't make the flip-flops garbage, and vice versa. If you wear a pair of flip-flops to shovel snow, it's not the flip-flops fault. It's probably your fault for choosing the wrong shoe for the task at hand. And the same is the case with technology. So that being said, this is the HP Stream 11 entry-level $200 Windows laptop. And I've got good news and bad news for you. The good news is, is that we've come to a point where an entry-level Windows laptop that you can buy for $200 is very usable. It used to be that if you bought a very inexpensive laptop, it might not be usable. I remember buying the Dell Inspiron Duo, which was a tablet slash laptop with a flippable screen, the first device to do such a thing, and it was so disappointing because it was unusable. Now, I never published a series of videos on the Dell Inspiron Duo, but maybe I will in the future because I still have those videos unedited, and when I get around to it, I'll publish them to this channel. But the point is, is that you can now buy a $200 Windows laptop and it's very usable. The bad news is, is that this Windows laptop isn't going to suit everyone's needs, but it is going to suit certain people's needs. So let's get into that right away. I don't want to waste anybody's time. If you're a person who wants to game on your computer, this device is not for you. If you're a person who wants to do video editing on your computer, this device is not for you. If you're a person who wants to do Photoshop on your computer, then this device is not for you. Sure, this device can run certain games, it can run certain video editing software, and it can be used to edit photos, but if your main use case is to play games, to edit video, or edit photos on something like Photoshop, not a web-based photo editor, then you want to go with a device that has a little bit stronger processor. If you're into gaming, definitely get a laptop with a dedicated graphics card. Going back to my analogy about the shoes, you want to choose the device that's right for you. You want to be smart about your purchases. Don't buy an entry-level laptop if you're not going to be doing entry-level tasks. Now, don't get me wrong, if you want to play a game on this, it's quite possible to play a game on this device. As long as it's a very lightweight game, a flash game, or something you might find in the Windows Store. You can edit video on this device if you want to, but it's going to be through services like YouTube. Likewise, you can edit photos on here, but again, it's going to be something that you're going to be doing on a web-based program. You don't want to run heavyweight programs on an entry-level laptop. So now that I got that out of the way, if you're still with me, and this laptop might sound like something that you want, let's dive a little bit deeper into what the HP Stream 11 is all about. Now, the HP Stream 11 is not the only entry-level Windows laptop out there. You have other options, such as the Asus X205. For the record, the HP Stream 11 is a little bit of a higher-powered device than the Asus X205 is. And even though they have the same screen size, as you can see, the HP Stream 11 is slightly larger than the Asus X205. And that's true in height, width, and thickness, and weight as well. Now, the HP Stream 11 and laptops like it exist to combat Chromebooks. I've mentioned it in previous videos, but Chromebooks are taking a bite out of the education market. Over 80% of Chromebooks sold currently sell to the education market. 
And although Microsoft is still the dominant laptop and desktop operating system worldwide, Microsoft doesn't want the Chromebook inroads to become highways, so they've actually eliminated the licensing fee that OEMs, or original equipment manufacturers, pay them when they sell a new laptop. So in other words, when HP sells a laptop, they have to purchase a licensing fee, generally, from Microsoft to put Microsoft Windows on their device. Well, that isn't the case anymore with laptops $250 and below because Microsoft is trying to combat Chromebooks and they're bringing the price down on their low-end devices. So when they don't charge that licensing fee, they pass that savings on to the customer. And so you can have a Windows laptop competing with a Chromebook laptop on price. Now, Microsoft still does make money, but not up front. They'll make it on the back end through search, through Bing, and also through services like Office 365. Now, of course, this video is not a comparison between these two devices. I will have a dedicated video on the HP Stream versus the Acer Chromebook 11, but I am showing you different devices in this review to give you perspective. This is the market that the HP Stream 11 is entering. And the reason you're probably watching this video is trying to decide if the HP Stream 11 is a good choice for you, because there are other options out there for you. So the HP Stream 11 is a compact device. It's 8.1 inches by 11.81 inches, and the thickness on it is 0.76 inches. For those of you who live outside of the United States, it's 20.57 centimeters by 30 centimeters, and it's 1.98 centimeters in thickness. It weighs 2.8 pounds or 1.27 kilograms. Now, as I mentioned before, it has an Intel processor inside, and that's an Intel Celeron N2840 running at 2.1 six gigahertz per core. It's a dual core device. It has two gigabytes of DDR3 SD RAM in it. It has a 32 gigabyte eMMC drive in it, which is an SSD. An eMMC drive is generally something you'd find in a tablet. It's running Windows 8.1 with Bing. It has 802.11 BG and N Wi-Fi, and it's also equipped with Bluetooth. Now the battery is a lithium ion battery and they say you get 8 hours and 15 minutes of use out of it. I don't really do battery tests on this channel, but I can say that you do get good battery life out of it. Now as with all modern Intel chipsets, you're going to get Intel HD graphics on this device. And that goes hand in hand with what I said earlier. If you're into gaming, you definitely want something with an Nvidia or an AMD graphics chip in it. But the HD graphics, the Intel HD graphics on board on here is going to help with your online video playback. And we're going to get into that in a minute once I open up the device here. Overall, I really like the way the device looks. It has a unique design language to it. You have your HP branding here. It has a very bright and vibrant color. This also comes in a uh, magenta color, I think it is, or a, maybe a purple color. Uh, I opted for the blue but uh, it does definitely have a unique design language and I really like that. On the spine here you have your Hewlett Packard branding. On the left side of the computer you have a Kensington lock back here. You have your power port and you have a full-sized SD card slot. On the front of the device there is nothing here. On the right side of the device you see that you have a combo headphone microphone jack, two USB ports, and an HDMI port. On the bottom of the laptop, you have four rubberized feet and you have your two stereo speakers here. It does not have a user replaceable battery on it. Again, this is a very entry level device. When you open up the device, the unique color extends to the inside as well. Although the palm rest is actually a brighter color than the shell casing on this device. You have your white keys. It has a distinctive look. I actually really like it. Now, of course, everybody gives Windows laptops a hard time because they always have these stickers on here. You have an advertising sticker here telling you that you do get one terabyte of OneDrive cloud storage when you do buy this device, and that's for one year, as well as a free one-year subscription to Windows Office 365, which is useful because if you use Office, Microsoft Office, you have the availability to use all those programs just by buying this device. So for $200 for buying this device, that's a great value, that as well as the cloud storage there. 
you have a little QR code there, and then you have your Intel inside branding on the side. All of these stickers you could remove if you want to get rid of them. Now, of course, you have your stream branding here, as you can see there, and there's an interesting gradient on the palm rest. You can see the design on there, and it goes to a darker color up top. All in all, I found this keyboard very comfortable to type on. The device has an 11.6 inch screen, and that's 768 by 1366. When I fire this up, I'll show you the viewing angles on it. Now it is equipped with an HD webcam, so that will shoot in 720p up here. You also have two microphones here, which gives you the noise cancellation function. Also, the screen is a matte screen, which I love. I love matte screens. I will choose a matte screen over a glossy screen 100% of the time if I'm given the option. So, so far so good. I really like the design language on the laptop. Very unique, very fun and it's a solid entry-level laptop. If you want to know what the webcam looks like, click on the link at the end of this video and you can see all the videos I posted on this device, which includes several camera tests that I did with the webcam here. Now, I've used the HP Stream now for about three weeks as my daily driver, so I've gotten to know the device, its pros and cons. I did want to bring back the Asus X205 just to show you one thing that I wanted to comment on about the HP Stream, the trackpad here. As you can see, the trackpad on the Asus is a little bit bigger here. And I haven't spent as much time with the ASUS model as I have with the HP Stream, but from my limited use with the ASUS, I really do like the extra space you do get on the trackpad here. It's a little bit taller and a little bit wider. Now, that's not to say that there's anything wrong with the HP Stream 11 trackpad. I just found that you have to get used to the trackpad when you're using it. Not everything is evident right out of the gate. Now you'll notice on the ASUS over here, you have a little line on the trackpad at the bottom, which is a division between the right, uh, left and the right click on the device here. Over here you don't have that division, but you still have that same functionality. Now as you can tell, I fired up the device here so I could further illustrate how the trackpad works. But I did want to mention that you're probably seeing a flicker on the screen here. You do not see that in person. The only reason I know is that I'm looking at my camera right now and I'm seeing what the camera is picking up. So the flicker on the laptop here is only between the laptop and the camera. You do not see that in person. Anyway, back to the trackpad here. You have to get to know how to use the trackpad before you can pass judgment on it. I had to get used to how the trackpad works because it works a little bit differently than some of the other trackpads I've used. Now the first thing is, is that you can actually swipe in on the trackpad. So you can swipe in from the left and it will go to the last place you were at. And you can also swipe in from the right and it will bring up your charms menu here. Now if you're not familiar with that, sometimes you might inadvertently hit one of those things and you might get frustrated. Let's bring this back to the desktop here. So right here I have my Tech Harvest banner and if I wanted to right click that you just accomplish that by again clicking the right part of the trackpad, the lower right part of the trackpad. And of course the lower left part is your regular mouse click. Now you can accomplish a right mouse click with the two fingers, but it's not something that always works. So I had a little bit of frustration when I first used this device because of that, because that's what my brain wants to do when I want to right click, I just use my two fingers. Sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. So once I realized how this trackpad works, things became much easier. So as far as I'm concerned, I could definitely recommend this device. But whether this device is good for you is going to depend on your use case, like I mentioned at the top of this video, and the performance of this device. So let's start with video playback. Let me bring up my welcome video here and let's start it from scratch. Let's see what the video performance of a YouTube video is on this device. So let me hit play.
So the video playback on a YouTube video is good. No real issues there. The same is true with Netflix. Now, I'd love to show you something on Netflix, but I'd also like to not get into any copyright concerns with my channel here. I don't want to get sued by anybody. So I can't really play anything on Netflix for you, but I can tell you anecdotally that this device will play Netflix videos much like what you saw here for a YouTube video. And that's probably because YouTube and Netflix are the two biggest websites for serving up video content. So there's a lot of optimization on the back end with both of those services. You will run into problems playing video on this device if you deviate from YouTube or Netflix. For instance, when the 20th anniversary PlayStation 4 was announced, Giant Bomb did an unboxing. And they use a different video service other than, of course, Netflix. They wouldn't put that on Netflix, but they don't use YouTube for their video service. The video playback on that was very choppy. Also, I watched the PlayStation Experience keynote on this device, or at least I had it running to do a test on there. And that was also very choppy. Not quite a slideshow, but it was a little bit too much for this device. So this should give you a little bit better picture of what you're dealing with with the HP Stream 11. It's a good entry-level laptop. But if you don't have entry-level laptop needs, you definitely want to get a different device. Now, web surfing is fine. Obviously, my browser of choice is Chrome, and that's what you see here, but this device also offers Internet Explorer, which you would imagine is the case because it is a Microsoft device. There you go. I just let you see how Internet Explorer loads on this device, and it gives you an idea of why I use Chrome. Chrome loads a little bit faster initially. Now, as you saw, I had one tab open on Chrome, and I have two tabs open on Internet Explorer. Now, my general recommendation for this device, after using it for about three weeks as my daily driver, is that it works well for multitasking, but you don't want to throw more than two or three things at it at a time. Now, that's not to say that it's not going to be able to handle more than th two or three things. I mean, I also have the Microsoft Store open down here as well. It will handle multiple tasks at the same time. But the more tasks you throw at it, the more it's going to use up the system memory. So as a general rule of thumb, two to three tasks are good on this device. And that's better than you're going to get on tablets. Now, there's one other thing I forgot to mention about the trackpad, and that's the scrolling. The scrolling is the opposite of what you would have on a regular laptop or something that you might be used to. Now, if you're a Mac user, you're already used to it because they introduced it probably a year or two ago where you would scroll like you would on a tablet. So if you want this to move down, you push up on the trackpad, and that's because the theory behind it is that you're actually moving the content up. So again, much like a tablet. So if you're used to scrolling on a regular touchpad, it's inverted. And that's by default. While we're at it, why don't we take a look at how it scrolls. Pretty smooth. If you want to see the side to side, let's go back to the start menu here. And you can scroll from side to side very easily. So the trackpad is very responsive. Again, you just have to get to know how to use the thing. So. With all those things open, we have the store open, we have several instances of Internet Explorer open, and of course we have Chrome open as well. Let's open up a game here. Let's go to Angry Birds Space. The music was blaring, so I had to bring the music down. But uh, this is just the trial of Angry Birds Space. You can see that everything's very functional. Again, we have a couple of things open. And we're going to try this out just to show you what everything looks like, how it functions on this device. Now, a lot of you asked, will this device play Minecraft? Will it play League of Legends? From what I understand, this device will play those games. You're not going to get optimum performance out of it, but you are able to play those kind of games on this device. I'm just showing you a mobile game here because it gives you an idea of the caliber of game you're going to be able to play on this device. You're not going to be able to play Titanfall on this game or whatever the latest you know, big PC game is out there. We all know how to play Angry Birds. So... Let 
There we go. So with all the instances open of web browsers and again the store, you can see that the game runs very smoothly. But again, this is a mobile game. And that's really what this device is. It's an alternative to a tablet, but with more functionality. So a tablet, for me, doesn't really fit into my life other than using it to access information very quickly. But if I want to actually get work done, I really need to get onto a computer. And this is, in my opinion, a step above a tablet. For $200, this is a very good device if you need to access a full operating system like Windows. You're going to get good battery life out of this. It's very comfortable in styling as far as the keyboard doesn't feel cramped. I mean, it is smaller, but it does not feel cramped. Once you get used to the trackpad, things work well. It's not a janky device. The webcam is very good. The screen is sufficient as far as viewing angles. The viewing angles are not the best, but again, this is an entry-level laptop. Let's show you the viewing, viewing angles on the vertical here. A little better there on the vertical. But again, let's go back to what I said at the top of this video with the shoes. You're buying an entry-level laptop, so don't expect $1,000 performance out of this device. But for what it is, it's an excellent little device, and I could definitely recommend it. Whether it's going to suit your use case, that's for you to decide. I'm just trying to tell you what this device will do and will, what it will not do for you. But if you're the type of person who needs a Windows device, whether that's for Internet Explorer, I do some work at my day job where I do need access to Internet Explorer. So it's nice to have a device that has it. If you're a person who needs Microsoft Office, this device comes with Office 365 for free for one year on it. So there's definitely a lot of value to this device. To me, this is a step up from a tablet because you get that multitasking ability of a full operating system that you're not going to get on a mobile operating system. For instance, if you want to play a YouTube video and listen to it in the background while you do something else, you can do that with this device without any issue. On Android or iOS, currently you're going to have to pay a monthly subscription fee for Google Music Key in order to do that. So this device opens up the world of a full operating system and the value of that is the multitasking ability. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you wanna help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, or share this video. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.